Happy Election Day. Polls are open until 9 tonight, so there's still plenty of time for you to get out there and vote. We have two stories to inspire you. Republican and Democratic election commissioners who get along and hope you'll be kind to poll workers and a program that trains veterans to bring their service to country mission to public office. Those are today's stories of the day. Support for Story of the Day comes from the St. Lawrence County Community Development Program, now accepting applications for the Head Start program to prepare children ages 3 to 5 for school. Online at slccdp.org slash head dash start. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Tuesday, November 5th. First story. This incredible moment of democracy in action, Election Day, is only possible because of local election officials and poll workers. Yet those workers have been the targets of increasing harassment and abuse nationwide. So today we hear from the election commissioners of Essex County who say trust the process and vote. Amy Feireisel reports. In New York State, county boards of elections have two commissioners, one Democrat, one Republican. They have to work together, but they don't have to be friends. There are some counties where the Republican and Democrat sides have offices in separate buildings because they just can't get along with each other. That's Jack Moulton, the 31-year-old Republican commissioner for Essex County. His Democratic counterpart is 69-year-old Mary McGowan. They say their predecessors were sometimes at odds. So when Jack and I started working together and the Board of Supervisors would see us, go, you two get along? I said, yeah. <laughs> they were almost surprised. Moulton and McGowan are relatively new to their jobs. They both started in 2022. Friends or not, Moulton says New York's bipartisan system forces parties to work together. You know, I'm here representing the Republican Party. I would never allow the Democrats to get away with something. And Mary would never allow me to get away with something. It's an elaborate system of checks and balances. McGowan and Moulton get the mail together. They each have a key. They both have to certify mail-in ballot signatures. They have to help people together. So if a voter comes in even and says, I really can't see very well, I need some help with this, there has to be representative from each party there, there to, to assist them. McGowan and Moulton were both approached to serve as commissioners. Moulton says it's not exactly a highly sought-after position. And I think I might have been the only person to say yes to it. <laughs> The chairman of the board, when they swore me in, said congratulations or condolences. Not sure which. (laughs) You see, Essex County is one of the few in New York that still has part-time commissioners. Moulton and McGowan make less than $30,000 a year. And it's no walk in the park. We're a part of a group of 100-something election commissioners across the state. And I know a lot of other counties have really struggled with just the increasing hostility between the public and election workers. McGowan and Moulton say they haven't been directly threatened, but members of their staff have. So they've been taking new precautions. After a county in southern New York had crystal meth sent to their board of elections, the Essex County office got protective gear for opening mail. They've thought about what to do if fentanyl comes in an envelope. We have Narcan on hand, just in case. They open something and we have to administer. You know, we're prepared. And I never thought that that would be something we would need in the office. (laughs) But it's here. Yeah. The heightened tension, the potential for harm for poll workers, it hasn't always been this intense. Many election officials point to November of 2020, the last presidential election, when former President Donald Trump falsely claimed that the election had been stolen and blamed election workers for stealing it. None of those claims has been substantiated. But since then, over 90 percent of local election officials say they've taken steps to protect their staff, up cybersecurity and add physical security to polling places. That's from a nationwide survey conducted in May. In the same survey, over half of election officials reported being worried for the safety of their colleagues and staff. McGowan says she and Moulton feel responsible for their poll workers. So we have an aging population, and so some of our poll workers are in their 80s. She says they have a lot of repeat workers. They've been coming for years and doing this, and they're very good at what they're doing, and they understand the climate, and we go through de-escalation training with them so that they're prepared for any kind of confrontations also. But like everywhere, they never have enough workers. Recruiting and retaining poll workers has been a long-standing issue for U.S. elections. It's hard to ask somebody when you read articles about inspectors getting punched in the face, and it's hard to ask them to come do this for $18 an hour. It's definitely something they have to do as community service. You have to really care about what you're doing and being a part of the community to get people to sign up for this. Amy Feierisel, North Country Public Radio in Elizabethtown. Uh-huh. 
About 6% of Americans serve or have served in the U.S. military. That's down from 18% in 1980. A program in Syracuse is training veterans and their spouses to run for public office and hopefully bring their service to country mission to a divisive political system. NCPR intern Zach Jaworski reports. At a cafe in Syracuse, I'm meeting up with Allison Carlos, a former military spouse at Fort Drum. She works across the street for the federal government. Carlos says civic life wasn't always where she saw herself. But five years ago, she decided to run for mayor of Watertown. So I decided to throw my hat in the ring. I had no political experience prior to that. And honestly, I really knew nothing about politics. I just knew I wanted to help my community. I was unsuccessful in that bid, but learned a lot. Ultimately, I realized that I had more to learn, though. And she did learn more through a course at Syracuse University called the Veterans Program for Politics and Civic Engagement. It takes veterans and military spouses and teaches them the ins and outs of being a public servant. Steve Lux, one of the professors at Syracuse, says Carlos is one of about 300 to graduate from the program since it started back in 2019. It's not an easy thing for people in the U.S. military to transition out of military life into what you might call civilian life. Our veterans deserve support. Luck says one option that draws on their dedication to the country is to seek public office. Well, what about those veterans that are interested in serving again, serving their country, either as employees in the government or running for office? And we just happen to settle on this question of, well, we'd really like to be there to support them if they want to run for office. This year, there are around 20 vets and spouses participating. Today, they're learning how to run a political campaign and having a Q&A session with Syracuse Mayor Ben Walsh. One of the current students is Robert Lovich, who was stationed at Fort Drum in the early 2000s. Veterans get out of the military when, when, when they get out. They sometimes have a tough time looking for work or um, trying to uh, get a better education. Lovich says he wants to run for local office one day. He credits that aspiration to having the ability to attend this veterans program free of charge, which wasn't an option when he first left the military. Because I didn't have great direction either once I got out, and back then there weren't as many resources as there are now. So, And Lux, the professor, says veterans are needed in today's political landscape. And of course, in this period of time in our history, it seems as if polarization is increasing, not decreasing. Infusing our political system with people that are very mission focused, that might might have more bipartisan tendencies than some of us otherwise. But military perspectives in politics weren't always as unique as they seem now. Stephen Ortiz is a professor of history at Binghamton University who has written several books about veterans and politics. He says in the 1980s, veterans made up nearly 80 percent of Congress. Now they make up less than 10. Those declines, Ortiz says, are partially because there are simply fewer veterans today than there were 40 years ago. Back then, services like the American Legion used to help veterans stay civically engaged. And again, the veterans organizations were really key. They they served as a as a kind of recruiters to get people into local government. However, Ortiz says those organizations have lost hundreds of thousands of members over the last decade. With fewer and fewer of them and less structured kind of vehicles for engagement, they've become less involved in government. Back at the cafe, the former military spouse, Allison Carlos, says the program brought together veterans with different backgrounds. This one, it was very non-traditional students. So we had students who had full careers, were very well educated, had vast experiences, and obviously had been involved in the military as well. So from their diverse backgrounds, we had some really dynamic conversations. She says that what they came away with is what they have in common. However, you know, we're all Americans, so I think that's something that brings us all together. Syracuse's program is trying to keep that collaborative attitude in politics, even as the country remains polarized. More veterans in public office could help heal some of that division. For North Country Public Radio, I'm Zach Jaworski in Syracuse.
Again, polls are open until 9 o'clock tonight, so you still have plenty of time to vote. I'll be on the air live with NPR sharing the results as they come in, so tune in on the radio, on your smart speaker, on the NCPR app, or streaming at ncpr.org. See you then. Music today by I Am Snow Angel of Lake Placid and Bee Children of Canton. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.